Right, look, zombie alert. <laughs> zombie alert. Lone zombie stand up on the sidewalk smoking a cigarette. Zombie alert. Oh, look. Look, look. White woman. Uh, right? A white dyke. <laughs> So there you guys can hear the sirens in the background. They have been continuously using the sirens since I got upstairs, right? Which is uh, over an hour ago, right? The constant uh, uh, sirens have been going on. Uh, anyhow, because you know they upset that I uploaded my videos again. Oh, and I, before I forget, so I got home when I got home last night. I went to uh, plug in my phone to my desktop so I can, uh, you know, transfer my videos. And I noticed that my computer was not recognizing my phone. So I'm like, what's going on here? So I went to my um, settings. Yeah. How you doing? Good, good, good. You all right? All right. Yeah. Okay. Respect. Um, so I noticed, like I said, that my phone, my, my desktop wasn't uh, recognizing my phone. So I went into my phone settings and saw that uh, my teetering or connection was turned off, right? So that's why my desktop wasn't recognizing the connection with my phone, right? So I had to change it now to where uh, I had to set it to where uh, with a USB connection to transfer images and videos, right? Which I've never had a problem with, okay? And all, then, you know, then I had to restart my phone and uh, was able to, again, connect to my uh, desktop, right? So I could transfer the pictures. Now, when I did that, all of a sudden, the my Bluetooth connection to my speaker uh, turned off <laughs> it was turned off and I was like oh okay 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 I see what they did right so when I wasn't when I couldn't connect to my uh, phone to my desktop you know my Bluetooth speaker was fine you know as soon as I change as soon as I went into the settings change it to where now I can connect my phone to my desktop all of a sudden my Bluetooth start working okay <laughs> Right, all of a sudden my Bluetooth start working. So I transferred the images and then I restart my computer again after disconnecting my phone. And then all of a sudden now my um, my Bluetooth start working again. Right now, you may think this is coincidence. This is not coincidence. Like I said, they've always tried to do things to send me subliminal message about not reporting. Uh, you know my targeting right uh, and so you know that's some of the very crafty ways in which they will um, send these sort of subliminal message by doing stuff like that okay also uh, you know I talk about the predators on the New York City predator department and police, uh, predator police department all across America. And I talk about the dark tribe personality types, like I said. You know, when you want to find where the most uh, serial killers are, look within the police department, the predator police department. If you want to find where the most domestic abusers are, look within the police, the predator police department across America. If you want to find where the most uh, um, child predators are look within the police department all across America. If you want to find where the most rapists and sexual abusers are, look within the predator police department across America. And I'm not kidding when I say this, all right? When I talk about how these predators put themselves in positions of power, the all tried personality traits, all right? And what they do is manipulate those of us within the, within the society to become or try to make us into who they are in order to take the focus off of them and put it onto somebody else. 
right? Lately, they've been uh, uh, these predator officers being outed. Okay, you had in Atlanta where you had a whole police department where the chief of the police department had was making bets with his officers, his subordinates, and who can uh, arrest people for the most DUI. And so what you had now is police officers, again, remember, you know, it starts from the top, not from the bottom, right? The positions of leadership within the predator department, predator police department across America, it is from the top position all the way down. So when you have a chief making bets that uh, to see which of his officers can have the most DUI, and what do you think will happen? So there you have officers. Now they only arrested one, no, but we know that there are others, okay, <laughs> who were basically arresting people who pass the DUI test. So they, they, they took breathalyzer test. They did the straight line walking test. They passed all these things, but they were still arrested and charged with uh, DUI. And so I gotta laugh when, like I said, when you have these people, particularly black people too. You know, they, this officer arrested a black woman in front of her children who was not drunk behind the wheel. Okay? And it's funny that these black women in particular will believe that these officers have their best interests. Right? Not understanding that they are being used they are being used as a tool to help destroy the black community, to help destroy black men, right? They have no concept, no idea of what's going on. This is why it's important that, like I said, as black men, that we need to take back our narrative. And, you know, for those, for our women who refuse to, uh, you know, get in, get on code with us, you got to walk away from them and leave them alone, you know? And if you have kids with them, you know, just be a part of your children's life and uh, you know walk away from these uh, from these women because they are conditioned they don't want to learn anything about uh, how they're being used and so you know we need to walk away from them all right because we as we see you know they are very toxic and they want us to accept them for who they are right with all their toxic with all their overweight with all of this shit that they bring all the toxic stuff that they bring and we're supposed to accept it because you know you know, we're just supposed to, right? But, you know, they get with men of other races and they whole attitude change. They go into the gym, they're working out, this and that. But we have to deal with them and all of their negativity and all their toxicity, whereas other groups of men don't have to deal with that. So we need to walk away from that. Leave them alone. If they don't want to learn, if they don't want to understand, then they are a direct threat to you, to your children, to our community, to each other. And we need to leave them alone. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.